Welcome back. So let's try and do some, uh, just talk about what I did last time because I did use two commands you didn't, you hadn't seen before, the git add and the git commit. That's how we save changes. That how we, that's how we send information about us wanting to change the folder since how it looked before. I want to try and show you what I mean with this drawing as well as I can. Um, we have this git repository, the .git folder. Think of it as this guy is our memory. It's the place, it's the brain that knows um, what's actually changed in the different versions of our code. For version 1, this is how the folder looked. For version 2, this is how the folder looked. If it was a version 3, this would be how the folder looked. So the Git repo will know that. It'll know the different versions and what was changed, what are the differences. Now, for us to decide what we want to send between the different versions, we have to figure out what we want to what we actually want to store inside this brain, inside this memory, inside the Git repository information set. So let's say in this case we had three files, file 1, file 2, and file 3 added to this folder. We'll do it soon inside an actual terminal. So these three guys were supposed to be added to this version 1 of the code. Now I had to, I could just say I want to add everything. So if I did a git add, with just an, a dot in the end, meaning that I want to add all the files, then they would all be added to version 1. But they wouldn't be added until I did an actual git commit. Then they would be put down into memory over here saying, okay, so version 1 has all the files 1, 2, and 3 inside them. They are all added inside version 1. If I did a git add everything and a git commit. Great. So, when I wanted to do version 2, maybe I also had a file called file 5 and maybe file 6 and file 7 here. But, I didn't want to add them all. I only want to add to this commit, I only want to add file number 5. So, instead of doing a git add all, I'll do an add 5 number file. 5. Again, I'll show you in a second. And then what I did was a commit again. So the, the 5 file is what we call it's staged, but file 6 and 7 are unstaged. They are not ready to be committed yet. So when I do the commit, what will happen is version 2 will still have these guys in this case but it'll only also have file 5. It won't have 6 and 7 here at all. Okay, great. For version 3, I want to make even more changes. I, wanna, I still have file 6 here and 7. They're still on my hard drive. They're not committed, but they are on the hard drive, right? Now, I didn't want 6 to be there, so I'll just remove that guy. He's gone, but I still want to add file um, 7 so I'll do again an add with a dot and then a commit. Great, now I've committed that one. So now in version 3, I'll actually have file 7 here available as well. And this guy has been deleted, so let me just delete him. He's not even here anymore, he's all gone. So that makes sense. Okay, let's just make one more commit and then we'll try to actually do it in the console instead. So here we'll make a new commit. This time what I want to do is I want to destroy file 1. I'll remove that guy and then I'll do another commit. So I'll do again a git add everything and then I'll do a commit. And what will happen is this guy for version, I'll just do the entire version 4 up here tell you, show you how that looks now. The entire version 4 will look something like this. 2, 3, 5, 7. Those are the files that are available. So that's the add function. We can decide what files we want to actually do in a single commit. The cool thing is that we can choose to only select some files for each version, for each representation inside Git. That's the goal of it. Next lesson, I'll show you how to do this in the terminal and in the desktop. See you next time.